Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the AI, or Artificial Intelligence, uh, Augmented Intelligence panel. And I'm obviously from England, and I apologize in advance for my German. Guten Tag is probably, or Guten Morgen is, is where I stop. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the AI landscape, and then we're going to go into a panel discussion with my guests here. Um, so let's get straight in. I think it's interesting when you do an analysis and, uh, of the AI landscape today, and this was some work that we did just two weeks ago in preparation for this discussion this morning. I think it's really interesting. 14,000 startups um, can currently be associated to artificial intelligence or augmented intelligence. But what does that really mean? Because the, the breadth of AI is so wide, of course, be it voice recognition, which is something I find particularly interesting, image recognition, machine learning, automation, document uh, uh, reading autonomously. But the whole sort of gambit, really, I think it's really interesting that machine learning is really the dominant technology. And what does that really mean? I think we'll dive into that on the panel. Something really encouraging, and of course on the panel here we have uh, some experts who are investing in AI at the moment. If you look at how the funding series A, B, C, D is actually been reflected over the last five years, we can see, and I find this really encouraging, being a dominant by Series A funding. So that really shows the maturity of the AI landscape as we're entering into 2018 and, and uh, 2019. And I think that's really encouraging that investors are actually sticking with their Series A funding rather than, as we've seen in the past, catapulting through the investment cycle, which ultimately I don't think actually does anything to the actual startup or investee company itself. Some other facts. I think this is interesting. One in 12 startups across all industries are using AI as part of their product portfolio, up from about one in 50 six years ago. Interesting as well, and, and this is something we're going to dive into on the panel, that startups are being labeled as AI attract 50% more funding than other technology investments. Having said that, though, 40% of European startups that are classified as AI don't actually use AI in any way that's material to their business. So really, is AI a hype to really attract more funding? And how can we really understand what is true AI, what is true benefit, and, and investors really getting into um, the technologies that they believe they're really actually investing in? So, so given that, let's just do a, a quick introduction to ourselves. I'm, I'm Pamela Spence. I lead our global health sciences and wellness practice at, at EY. But, but with me today is uh, Chiara. Chiara is the investment director at Intel Capital. Extensive experience in uh, HTG, um, which really here in Germany has funded, I think it's 500 startups to date. Um, I've got Minu. Um, thank you very much, Manu, for, for joining us today. Quite a late addition to, to our panel. Uh, Manu being Vice President at Bertelsmann Investments. Bertelsmann Investments, of course, being part of um, the bigger Bertelsmann company. Uh, Manu really overseeing investors' fund activities and the Digital Partners Program. And lastly, but by no means least, and I would say unusually, a male being in a minority on a panel <laughs> in technology. Uh, we have Chris, Chris, the CEO and founder of Arago, which, I don't know, is it the first German AI company, but certainly the longest surviving AI company. So welcome, all three of you, to the panel um, this afternoon or this morning. So let's kick off. Um, Chris. Um, uh, and all of you, but I'll come to you, Chris, first. What excites you the most about AI? I mean, I've just given some statistics on, on the AI landscape, but, but what are you most excited about? So when, when I started AI more than, than 20 years ago, um, I had this idea as, as a nerd, 
it's, these are a lot of hard problems if you actually build AI. I mean, there's a difference between building and using AI. So if you're building AI, you find a lot of hard and challenging problems, which attracts a lot of good tech talent. Um, and aside from that, he said, like, if, it, if you can get that stuff to work, to actually be a problem solver, then um, it is a huge lever towards what we're doing today. So two, two exciting things. One is um, you do something interesting. Uh, and number two, if, if it works, it, ha it, it has a huge effect, impact. Right. And, and what about you, Minu? What, 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 it, what excites me, you so much about AI? Um, to me, I guess the most exciting aspect of AI and certainly bringing in an operational perspective or corporate perspective into uh, this discussion is, um, is the fact that usually when you have very complex situations, you may even think they are unmanageable. And I think with the help of AI, you um, sort of you can leverage yourself into a position where you start being able to manage uh, uh, complexity. Even so, that you would say um, the more complexity, the more execution you can actually get. And I think that's a quite interesting correlation that uh, that we ha haven't had before. Um, at, at Bertelsmann, I mean, we we look into now and the future. We look into things which how we can leverage our existing value creation. So particularly interesting in the creative industries, uh, um, where some people think it's the opposite. Um, and in the future, I think for us, it's most interesting to see and most exciting, um, given that we have quite a decentralized uh, nature of our organization, it's the most exciting aspect will be how we can leverage our synergies uh, between our divisions. And you mentioned making things less complicated. Yeah. So could you just give an example of that? An example of making things less complicated. I, I think the um, the what I wanted to say is basically you have as a human being, I guess you have a limited capacity of processing information. So um, usually you you rather ref refrain from situations where there's a l there's lots of information, lots of data that you would need to digest to come up with a decision in terms of a pattern recognition. And I think with the help of AI you will be able to see um, you, s you see solutions that you haven't been able to see before. And this may be in the reuse of content. In any ways of how we monetize our content, uh, we will see definitely potential that we haven't been uh, leveraged before. And what about you, Chiara? What, what excites you most, and, and where do you see AI going in the future? Mm -hmm. So until today, um, it was limited what humans can do, kind of what you were referring to, that any particular human can only process that amount of information. With AI, we can go beyond these limits and tap into the collective brain power of humankind uh, to process much more information in a very efficient way. And like with this, we can bring like like uh, human um, intelligence like intelligence to everything that we are interacting with um, and on the one hand this amplifies the, the human ability with machines to process analyze evaluate an abundance amount of data around us but frees up our time to spend on um, creativity uh, on decision making and things that are maybe a bit more enjoyable. And for, for, for the world in general, it's, it's the ability to democratize certain very expensive services, like in the financial industry, in the healthcare industry, and solve problems that weren't so being able to solve before. This is what's really exciting, but it's also a long way to go there. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I think the theme that, that, that we've picked up on is the capacity to simplify to speed and scale with, with, with AI. But, but Chris, from your perspective, and you've been around, as, as I mentioned, for quite a while as a specialist in this area, from an economic perspective, um, certainly with the work that Arago does, what do you see as, as the main benefits? In the end, what you get is automation. And, and mainly machines do tasks that we previously had to do, uh, and and machines do things that 
are either too tedious or too expensive or too dangerous or whatever, just going down that way. But I think the principle of automation changes with AI, right? The principle before, if you wanted to automate, you needed to standardize, consolidate, and use economies of scale. With AI, you no longer need this, right? All you need to describe is what you want as an outcome, and the machine will find the solution for you. That's, that's a whole different ball, ball game. And Chris, do you have a perspective on, at the moment, we're using a lot of intelligence to automate, simplify things that arguably we as humans would rather not do. How far off do you think we are from a paradigm of clever thinking machines that actually will be able to think faster than us in more cognitive ways? Well, a lot of things are already, we've, we've um, exceeded humans or outperformed humans, and I really don't understand why so many people are afraid of that. I mean, this is why we built machines in the first place. No one wants to have the job of a crane. A crane is much better at lifting stuff, uh, and uh, a lot of, for example, computer vision AIs are much better at seeing stuff um, th than people. I think the, the differentiation is somewhere else. The differentiation is that because we have free will and we have the I, the self, self-consciousness, we actually can go against just optimization. We can say, I don't, I don't want to just optimize what we have here. I want it totally differently. And AI would not do that or could not do that that way or only randomly, which would probably be not very well. Good. Okay. And, and ladies, you're more on the investment side. What about the economic benefits that, that, that you see? I mean, clearly one invests for an economic return, but, but the, the whole capacity of AI is, is more... A, I would argue, a, a social, um, societal, economic benefit. What, what are your perspectives, um, agree, disagree, uh, from, from that perspective? Um, I don't just think that it's a society uh, that gains from this. Uh, today, um, companies differentiate themselves through efficiency and innovation, and both these things, or this makes like companies win. And on... Historically, if you look at other technological transformations, like, like the cloud, for example, it started with a huge efficiency gain, and then it enabled new business models and coming to market faster. I think the same is happening with AI. So it starts with workforce automation, like Chris just said, and startups that can prove how companies with their can, uh, technology can reduce costs and can be more, become more efficient, will be successful. And then it's a second generation of how new products can be offered and things that are solved that weren't be able to be solved before. And um, on the productivity side, I think those are relevant. Like uh, Also historically, if you look at, at software, it also um, automated a lot of things, but it uh, automated it workstation per workstation. And with AI, we could talk about whole departments that can be replaced by AI. And um, there are certain departments within companies that are earlier to adopt these things. That's why uh, my opinion is like the IT industry that adopts to AI the fastest. And then you have industries like financial industry, healthcare, retail, um, th that are adopting uh, AI for, for their markets. Sure. And, and what about you, Manu? What, any societal impact, society return? Or not? Um, let me maybe first go back to your question on the investment side. I mean, you mentioned something in the presentation on... Um, AI companies, um, are they actually AI first companies or are they just using AI? I think there's probably almost no company anymore which is not somehow using AI. Um, so uh, from an investment perspective, we are particularly interested in those companies which we consider um, AI first uh, companies, um, which you would, as an example, find in um, B2B platform businesses. Uh, we, for example, invested in China into um, two companies offering a proven AI solution for autonomous driving. Um, so that's the kind of things which, which interests us, uh, usually um, more designed as a platform than, than rather a, a narrow application. But I guess uh, Chris is the better person to speak about the difference uh, between general and uh, narrow AI. Um, but that's usually the things that, that are interested, interesting for us. And that also means that we are in that 
moment, um, obviously, when you talk about autonomous driving, we are obviously uh, also making a bet on a certain trend, uh, which has a societal um, impact. But to us, um, I, I think the societal impact, and then maybe I would like to talk more now on the second hat that I'm wearing on partnerships, um, is we are looking to, to find the right partner to go with us through the digital transformation. And I think if you ask me about impact, we, um, and especially as corporates, um, and then also obviously uh, as investors, should really think about who we would like to push forward into in, in that entire development. And if you ask me about societal um, um, uh, aspects, uh, I think we could look into the entire um, platform businesses. We could actually make up the entire discussion around who are the companies that we'd like to push. Are those the ones, the American platforms? Are those ones the Chinese players? Do we have an, uh, a European uh, player like we have with Chris and Arago um, that uh, we should work with? Um, I mean, we are, we are in touch. Uh, we are working with Chris. And uh, we are particularly interested in those um, AI companies that are often offering a solution that we as a company can apply across divisions. And that's for me the most important thing that we should ask ourselves in Europe is um, where are we in this entire development and wave of investments in AI? What do we do and which companies are we really investing? Uh, which are the ones that we are trying to push forward? Thank you. I, I want to, I know we've only got a couple of minutes left, Chris, I want to pick up on something that you, you mentioned about, um, uh, something about, I'm going to misquote you slightly, but the fear of AI, and, and you mentioned, you know, why wouldn't we just want a crane to do the job that we don't want to do? There's a lot of ethical concerns that, that wash around the political landscape, many different countries uh, across Europe. At what point do you think, um, augmented intelligence becomes pure artificial intelligence without human intervention. And do you see this, um, really, the political statements and the concerns or the regulatory concerns ever going away? Just love your perspective on that. Well, that's a, that's a tough question, right? Because um, whatever you say, it, it can be construed in any way. <laughs> is, um, look, our, our worldview and our world is pretty broken. I mean, if, if uh, you look at the conflicts that are, that are in the world and if you look at how society is no longer about community but about egotism and so on, there's lots of ethical things to be discussed inside society. And since AI takes data from us as society, AI will replicate and optimize on, on the top of what we're doing. So I would say the, the ethical questions should we shouldn't change the data to train an AI, we should change society to get better data to train an AI, because that is where, where in the end it comes from. And, and I think all these ethical discussions are worthwhile. The attempt to just push it off to a few developers is not correct. So we need to change society to change AI. No, I think that's a, that's a great phrase, so thank you. Um, we're running out of time, so just like one last comment from, from each of you. I'll start with you, Manu. Um, the, ne the next big thing in AI? The next big thing in AI, um, as I mentioned before, I think we should be looking into horizontal AI solutions that we can uh, apply across uh, different uh, divisions. Um. Okay. Kiara? Anything that leverages AI, Intel infrastructure. <laughs> okay. And, and finally to you, Chris. I think the next big thing is, is going to be a much better integration with people. <laughs> Perfect. Maybe with some speech recognition and that uh, aspect of it. Potentially, but just is seamlessly, right? Currently, AI is still not user-friendly in, in a way. Yeah. It has to become part of us. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Kiara, Manu, and, and Chris. And thank you very much, uh, Noah Conference, for welcoming us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.